Okay, hopefully I'm live right now. I know I'm on a slightly different feed because pff, I still don't know what I'm doing. But welcome to this week's show where we navigate the spiritual realms and retrieve some answers for you. I am Nora Trisello, an intuitive expert, and I have written two bestsellers and speak nationally and internationally on intuition. So before diving right in, I want to see... I know there's a delay here. I believe I'm going live. So humor me while I try to figure out what's going on. I promise to edit this out of the other part of the, uh, when I replay the show, guys. Okay. It appears to be up. I just lost everybody. <laughs> Oh, you're here and I don't see the feed. I'm working on this, guys. Please accept my apologies as I stumble through. Okay. Hey, Elizabeth. All right, now I'm getting it. I apologize again. All right, no more apologies. Let's get right down to it. I know Elizabeth found me. Megan found me. Maggie found me, so I'm doing okay. Hi, guys. I will spare you the whole opening again, but I do want to get right down to who won the reading this week and how do you win a reading. You have to share this show that's on right now. Just hit that share button and you have the opportunity to win, but you also have to look at the top of this page where it says like, follow, share the page. Hit that follow button. Hey, Erin, Lisa, welcome, guys. Love the hearts. You guys make me feel so good. <laughs> um, I want to wait for my girlfriend to get on. I mean, I, I can sort of have you guys my girlfriends now because I see you weekly, even though I never met most of you in person. But I'm just going to spill the beans. Shauna, you won the reading. I know you're not on yet, but somebody's going to let you know. Congratulations, honey. You won the reading for sharing the show and following the page. I really appreciate it and thank you so much for that. Now for my two book winners. Um, this is kind of cool because one of the book winners is actually an elementary school friend of mine, Michelle Minotti, and I'm not even going to attempt your married name, Jess Spalski. I probably butchered that. But Michelle, I'm so excited that you won the book. And so has Lori uh, Garan, which is Chris's daughter. She has shared the show many a times, but this time her name did get pulled to, um, real quick, a lot of you guys do win. Your names get pulled, but because you never followed the page, I can't give you the free reading. So make sure you hit that follow the page. Hi, Carol, Erin, Denise, nice to see you guys. Kathy, welcome aboard. So I'm going to jump right in. Uh, this person said her name is Michelle. That's the anonymous name. This is a tough one. Uh, Nora, my husband has lost a, his job of eight years effective June 30th. We are frantically searching for a new role for him. He has over 20 years experience in his field. Do you see him getting a job in the near future? As our future depends upon it. Can you feel the stress? Thanks. And unfortunately, when I read these things, yeah, I get the stress or I get the joy, I get the, I get the emotion short, real quick. That's something you need to learn, especially you empaths. You feel the, what's going on out there? It's like put your big toe in the water at the beach to see if it's warm enough, and then you pull it out. You don't stay there, because if I stayed in this person's uh, energy, I would be a basket case. I wouldn't be able to do this show. So... Uh, obviously the stress is palpable. No job is happening fast. I'm sorry to say. Batten down your hatches is what I heard. You are in a storm. Look outside his field as well, just to help temporarily. Continue to try to get the jobs inside the field. It will come through networking. It will not come... Uh, you have to do all these applying and applying and applying. And then through networking, uh, I was told it's actually somebody you work with, worked with recently who considers you a friend who is going to make that connection and get you hooked up. But unless your applications are out there and unless you're aggressively looking at 
it's he's going to be the one that can help get your resume pulled kind of thing not actually do the whole thing so you really have a lot of work so you need to be all right you need to reassure your husband constantly do not lose faith stick this is their words stick to a horribly tough budget Inform banks and creditors now, not after you fall due, and ask for time. They're telling me because you have decent in, decent uh, ratings, um, credit ratings, that they're actually going to work with you, but not if you let yourself go into arrears. I'm hearing no job before February. It will be, it will be through a friend, but it's going to be very tough. Now, here's the lesson. Why is this happening? The lesson is to love each other and hold on tight and show your family how it is done in a crisis. There will be two choices, crying and blowing up and arguing because the tension gets really hard or soft voices speaking quietly, supporting each other, loving each other, understanding it is not each other who created this situation. It is the situation you find yourselves in. Both have the same scenario, no job. However, one will create struggle and a breakup. One can create a family unit that really um, is an example to your children, an example to younger nieces and nephews and other people in the family as to what you do when things are tough. So they're saying the choice is yours. You are in the storm. It is not going away, um, at least right now before February. I'm sorry. I wish I could give you something sweeter and nicer to chew on. Don't stop listening to me because it's a bad reading. <laughs> oh, no, it's a harsh reading. Lynn, Carol, welcome aboard again. Helen, uh, Diana, Carol. Oh, there's another Carol. Hello. Michelle, always great to see you. Um, feel free to throw up a couple questions, guys. I do have some really detailed answers here. And um, I'm going to take this one, even though I kind of hesitated about it. And I hope he's on. Open-minded mom. Hi, Nora. My son wants to know if he is spiritually sensitive. However, he has some skepticism. He wants to know if you are able to tell him his favorite color. I want to help him open to new possibilities, so I told him I would ask you on his behalf. We will be watching the live feed tonight. Okay, son. <laughs> Let me tell you what I tell people who sit down in front of me or call me on the phone and say, well, how many kids do I have? Listen, if you don't know how many kids you have and you don't know your favorite color, you don't need a spiritual intuitive. You need a neurologist because something's off in your head. All right? We are not mind readers. That is not our job. Spiritual sensitives are not telepathic. That's not what our goal is is to help a person heal from what the messages are that are coming through. So our messages come for what is best for your soul growth. So for example, the family I just read, um, yeah, I'm telling them February, but what was the soul lesson? What was it that was going to help them move forward? You know, I might be wrong. It might not be February. It might be sooner. It might be later. But the real lesson is the powerful soul lesson for them is to be able to do get through this together to just be able to give you a color i'm going to give you a color but not until the end of my lecture so <laughs> they consider asking things like how many kids i have color stuff like that very trivial they often will not answer it for me however they flashed the color green then they quickly flashed yellow and blue way in the distance. To me, that means you were thinking of green, but you like yellow too. So then you kind of went back and forth and then you thought, oh, but blue, I used to really like blue. So that's what it means to me. I don't know if I'm hitting it for you or not. I hope I am because you have some spiritual abilities, but 
you're not quite ready to open them up yet. Um, they're telling me you dream in colors and that you hear messages, you do hear guidance. And because of that, you are opening your third eye. The problem is you don't have any structure for prayer and meditation. And without that, you can open the door and get into a lot of bad mojo, bad energy, bad stuff. So unless you're going to truly take on a spiritual growing, um, actively working on your spiritual side, I would suggest keep it closed. I mean, opening up to the other side is really amazing, guys. It is wonderful, but it also comes with a lot of responsibility. So open-minded mom, I hope that helps your son, and I hope you heard the answer. Hey, Shauna, I hope you heard. You won, girlfriend. Congratulations. Hey, Tina Lewis, nice to see you again. Laurie, always good to see you. Linda, Helena. Um, okay, before I jump to the next one, Kathy asked, Kai Nora, I'm really sad now that my son just graduated high school. I'm just wondering, his next phase is going to get how's his next phase going to go? He's working in his field and started trade school in the fall. Help my anxiety. Oh my God. They're like jumping up and down right now, Kathy. Hold on a second. I want to, okay. Um, I just want to make sure I get to most of these. They're ecstatic. They're like, you couldn't have, he could not have made a better decision. This boy is going to nail the trades. He's going to make serious money. He's going to make more than you're making. Probably within two years of being out of school is what they're saying. More like 18 months. Um, trades are desperate. I mean, I know that that did not come from spirit, by the way. They are desperate for trades people. I get that from my boys who are in trades and are highly successful. Okay, now back to spirit. I like to always preface the difference, my opinion versus them. Uh, he's going to do awesome. You need to relax. It's very hard to let go of our children as they grow. Each phase is something else. I mean, we watch them graduate kindergarten and we're crying because they're not our babies anymore. Then they're out of elementary school, high school. It happens so fast. But you will now be friends with a man instead of a mommy to a boy. So congratulations. All right, let me jump into, this is such a cute name, Woos, uh, Woods, Woodsy bo Baby, Woodsy Baby. I think Woodsy Baby must like the woods. <laughs> it's such a great name. Uh, hi, Lynn, welcome aboard. Lynn, I'm not doing last names. I only butcher them and insult people. Olivia, great to see you. Okay. Could I get a message from my husband who passed away last year? Now, this is a long question, so I'm going to answer that one right now. No, not from me during the show. If you want to speak to a departed loved one, I only do that as private readings because we need to get confirmation. If any of you are a Long Island Medium fan like I am, love that woman, she always says, I see X or I feel Y and blah, blah, blah. She's getting confirmation that she has the right spirit. Obviously, when the wrong spirit comes in, they cut the film. They're not showing that part. She makes sure she knows who she's talking to. So do I. I can't do that on a live show like this. However, I can ask my guides to help you with the rest of this. So don't tune out. I've had a very interesting thing happened these past few days after a man friend stopped by to talk because his mother just passed away. That's when things started to happen. Right after I moved my husband's urn back to where I always kept it, the electric candles came on all by itself. This wouldn't be strange except the battery had been dead for a while and it just started working. It's still working today. I don't touch it or move it. Then the next day, there was a butterfly around me all day. Even when I looked out the window, the butterfly was there. Also today, when I was in the yard looking up at the sky, there was a heart-shaped cloud in the sky. It was there for a long time. I was able to get a picture of it. My question is, he's saying, hey, I'm here, and who is this guy? Or 
is he letting me know he is still with me and doesn't want me to get involved with this new guy? Um, okay, there's two things going on. First, uh, all right, so first the candles. Um, I immediately got a warning about the candles. I'm sorry to say that. The candles were not your husband. This, my spirit guides, the people, the guys who talk to me, are saying get some holy water, put it around the urn, put it around the candles, say a prayer, bless your house, invite the Holy Spirit in, clear it out. That what is lighting the candles is not your husband. However, the butterfly was a sign from your husband saying it's time for you to have a metamorphosis, break out of being alone break out and be show your beautiful self. The heart in the sky was his love for you. It will never die. It is always there. And that he wants you to understand loving another doesn't mean you stop loving him. And he knows that. Loving another is just opening you up to all that much more joy. So he is all on board. However, I am concerned about the candle, so please take my advice on that one. All righty. All right. I see a couple of hearts, so I got agreement. Thank you, guys. I love when I get agreement. <laughs> uh, Carol, I am fostering two dogs, and I was wondering if they will be adopted to someone else or me. Uh, I'm hearing loud and clear they're going to you, Carol, as long as that's what you want. I'm also hearing loud and clear you take on a little bit too much. Um, the concern, if the concern the spirits are having, not necessarily the adoption agency for the animals, is you aren't caring for yourself as much as you do the animals. You are more concerned about what they eat than what you eat. You are more concerned about them getting out and getting some exercise than you are about yourself getting out there and getting some exercise. So they'd like you to start focusing on yourself also. I hope that helps. Uh, Tina Lewis, welcome aboard. Helen, nice to see you again. All right, Lynn. We got lots of Lynn's tonight. This is really kind of cool. Shauna, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to jump in to oh wait a minute i didn't do my commercial i'm almost past the halfway point everybody right now please share the show share okay yeah, take a moment it's all right i'm right here i'm not going anywhere hit share it's important to me i gotta get out there somehow and i rely on you guys <laughs> now if you want to win a reading you have to also at the top of this page hit the follow button follow the into into page or a lot of you guys win, you know, your names get pulled, but you don't follow the page. And, and I end up not, actually three people got pulled before I got somebody who actually followed step two and followed the page. So come on, you want those free readings. Um, all right, we're going to jump into, this is another person named Michelle. Well, that's the anonymous name is Michelle. My question is regarding my oldest son. He is 20 years old. I'm concerned about addiction issues, yet he has not admitted that to me. I would love to hear your guidance regarding this concern. This was crazy. The way they, they shifted the whole, I hope you got a pen and paper or hit replay for this one because they're saying there is no addiction yet, but it will apply approach rapidly if something, if he doesn't become active in something. The spirits recommended tough love, but in, not in get out. You need to do something, but actually tough love as in show your son your budget. Now they're telling me you don't have a budget written down structurally. Like, I mean, I'm anal. I got a little budget. I got little envelope system. I do the Dave Ramsey stuff. Love that man. So I'm really anal. They're saying you just need to have a written down budget. You have a budget in your head. You know when you are meeting your bills. You know how to make it work. They want you to put it down clearly and then sit down with your son and say, listen, you're 20. You're not a child anymore. So you never learned this in school. You need to learn this from your parent. So I want to teach you 
how I do my bills and how I balance things. If you're gentle and help him understand it and tell him, look, every week or every two weeks when the check comes in, you're going to sit down with me and we're going to figure out who to pay, who waits, what do we need for groceries. Have him assist you with the budget. He's going to rapidly learn the concept of money, which he does not have. And at 20, he needs it. He's going to really appreciate this. It's going to create a bond between you. Um, and then after about three months, they said, you can then say to him, okay, you're at the point now, chip in. Time for you to help out. So we can have that much more as a family. And it's just what family does. When we live together, we share everything. We share our expenses. Don't do it before the three-month period. And take your time teaching him. And uh, really, uh, this isn't spirit speaking. This is me now. Go to Dave Ramsey for any kind of advice on how to budget stuff real easy so you can explain it to him. It's it's cool. Uh, he's a great, great um, Christian teacher on money. <laughs> I really like him. Okay, let's see. Rita. Welcome, Rita. I haven't seen you in a little bit. What's going on? Michelle Fletcher. I'm not sure what the scary face is all about, but Shauna, what do you see happening for my sister at work? Well, you're just going to have to wait for your free reading. We're going to give your question to somebody else. Mona, hi. I'm still carrying a lot of sadness within me. Oh, Mona, I'm so sorry. I will keep you in my prayers. Gina, welcome aboard. And anybody else who, you know, you got a little prayer list going on, please think of Mona. Keep her in your thoughts. Tammy, Tammy Howard, you would have won the reading, but you never followed the page. And, I'm, and I just saw your name and I'm like, yeah, that's one of the people I pulled. I'm sorry, honey. You got to make sure you follow this page, not just share. Okay. Uh, Tam, Tam Bria, first timer. Hi, sweetie. Nice to have you on board. Mary, Melissa. Okay, I'm going to grab somebody else. I don't see a question right now on the feed, so I'm going to grab another one off of the sheets that came in. I love this one. I was hoping I would have time to get to it. It's Kindred. Kindred asks, as my spiritual development continues, does spirit have an area for me to continue further development? Thank you. Love that. That's like such an insightful thought. So they smiled and said, there is always another layer. Often we think, now, now they got off onto a tangent very quickly. They said, often we think our emotional issues are handled because we so spiritually dealt with them. Um, but that's not always the case. And something occurs and we, we get triggered back to where we were when we were first wounded. Now, the nice part about being very spiritually developed, you don't hang out in that wounded area as much. You're able to get out of it faster. But they're telling me, you did not do enough emotional healing. So if you imagine, I mean, we we don't have to imagine this part. They wanted me to explain. You have your physical body, your mental, emotional body, and your spiritual body. Now we imagine these are three legs on a stool, okay? If one of those legs is out of balance, one is too strong, it's going to tip the stool, or one is too weak, it's going to tip the stool. They're telling me your spirituality is so strong and your emotional is weak, your physical is actually where it should be, that you are way lopsided. You need to get back into the emotional stuff and start healing some of the things that you said I'm done with that. I took care of that. I forgave them. It's all over. You forgave them, but it's not all over. There's still that pain. There's still that upset. And I'm like, yeah, of course there is. It's not always easy to let that go. But they said these painful memories uh, where you forgave, but you still feel the hurt. Uh, forgiveness is the correct step spiritually. But you also need to emotionally look at what, look at the pain. You have to go through that pain. You have to really feel it and acknowledge it that it was painful and it was unjust. And even then, at that point, when you really can let that pain up, you can then look at it and say, 
What did I gain from that? What did I learn from that? What are my strengths? Um, it is there when you can say, if you were asked, how did they put it? If you were asked, can I change this? If I could change this, would I? And you answered, no, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change any part of my past because I now see what it has given me. That is an, an emotionally strong leg on your chair, a really powerful leg. And that's not necessarily an easy place to get to. Now, when you have great spiritual strength, it helps. But sometimes the spiritual strength, you feel a little guilty about the emotional upset. And don't be. Let that emotion out. That is really going to stifle you otherwise. All right, let me grab somebody if I can real quick. Um, Melissa, got a call back from an application. Will it turn out for the best? If I take it, oh, now that's a tough one. That's I'm going to change the question slightly. It will turn, I'm asking them, how will it turn out for you in the current moment? And they're saying in the current moment, it would be a very good idea to take it. You will get offered it. Take it. Is it the best thing that is possible for you? No, of course not. There's tons of other possibilities out there. However, this is what will help you get to the next step. Don't ignore it and take it. Tina. What do you see for my kids job-wise? Are you kidding me, Tina? You got like three kids. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a little tough to try to answer in two minutes. So uh, throw that up on the next feed, put it in on a form, or get a private reading, honey. Tammy, am I following the correct page? I have it to show up first on my timeline. Tammy, it's into Intuition's page. Um, if I remember, I'll send you a link to the page to make sure you got the right one. It's actually the only, it's where we are right now. This is the page. Uh, so make sure you hit follow. Your name did not come up when I checked to, uh, and you would have had readings. Goosebumps of confirmation, Nora, need to sage that house. Yeah, the one with the candles. Please, baby, sh sage that house. It is important. Aaron, now I figured out my business adventure. Will I be successful in it? Um, yes and no. It's going to be a slow start. You're going to get very frustrated about it. You're going to know that you wasted your money and your time and people just don't get it. However, Within five years, I know that sounds like a long time, but within five years, you will be making money that more than covers all your expenses and what would be a decent income for yourself. Now, do you have the patience to put in that effort for five years? That's up to you. I know it gets really frustrating sometimes. Like I, I put in effort and I just get so burnt out sometimes. <laughs> all righty. I think we are coming to an end. So please don't forget to share and follow this page. I will be doing a class up in Lilydale, New York. I hope to see some of you up there on August 20th. It's a one-day class. Christine's going to join me as my assistant. I taught this class 100 times, but they let me have an assistant. So I said, oh, cool, Christine, come up with me. We'll make it a weekend away. <laughs> <laughs> the online class is going to be released sometime in August, as well as a membership section to Into Intuition. So check that out when it comes up. Make sure you join my email list so you don't miss out on any of this. Till next week, remember to say a prayer of protection. And until next time, bye.